Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the memorable Rogers and Hart musical hit, On Your Toes, starring Gordon McRae and his lovely guest, Marion Bell. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, sir, On Your Toes begins on the day Phil Dolan III was born, 25 years ago, in a very small hotel room in a very small town. How you feeling, Mama? <laughs> okay, Phil. Here, have a look at your son. Oh, hiya, Junior. Look at that old scene stealer. It's a big hand, that's what he is. I can tell right now he's going to be a, be a headliner. Oh, now, you stop talking vaudeville around him, Phil. I, I want him to be something worthwhile, like a, like a music professor. Honey, you're kidding. Coochie, 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 Look at him kick his feet. Why, he's a born hoofer. Music professor. Hoofer. Music professor. <laughs> And so, class, we note that the early 19th century brought forth the renaissance of singing composers. Uh, Miss Frayne? Yes, Professor Dolan? Can you tell me what inspired Franz Schubert to write his serenade? A beautiful girl? Uh, no, Miss Frayne. It was a pork chop and some liverwurst. <laughs> Even composers have to eat, you know. <laughs> Now, I, I wish to point out that there is tremendous competition in the field of music in our time, too. So, here is my advice to all of you. Remember the youth mid snow and ice Who bore the banner with a strange device Excelsior! This motto applies to those who dwell In Richmond Hill or New Rochelle In Chelsior! You've got to reach the heights to win the race. See the pretty apple top of the tree, the higher up the sweeter it grows. Picking fruit, you've got to be up on your toes. See the pretty penthouse top of the roof. The higher up, the higher rent goes. Get that dough, don't be a goof. Up on your toes, they climb the clouds to come through with their mail. The dancing crowds look up to some rare mail. Like that a stair mail, see the pretty lady top of the crop. If you want to know the way the wind flows. Then, my boy, you'd better hop up on your toes, up on your toes. Remember, remember what I said. And now, class dismissed. Mm. <laughs> Professor Dolan. Yes, Miss Frayne? Have you had a chance to look over the song I wrote? 
Oh, well, uh, yeah, yes, I have it right here. Well? Well, tell me, uh, how did you happen to write this? Well, it was here in class. The strangest thing happens to me every time I look at you, Professor. Yes? I get sick. Sick? That's not exactly it. I, I can't quite diagnose how I feel. That's why I wrote this song. It's got to be love. It couldn't be time to write. It feels like the writing. But nevertheless, it's love. A broken down house. It's gotta be love. It isn't the morning after that makes every rafter go spinning around the ball. I'm sure that it's fatal. Or why do I get the feeling? I think that I'm dead. But nevertheless, it's only love. Miss Frayne, uh, this is not quite a scholarly thing to say, but, you know, I get sick in the same way when I look at you. It's gotta be love. It could have been fallen archers or too many starches. But nevertheless, it's love. Don't tell me the lamp in the barber shop gave me sunstroke. With one stroke, you made me feel like yesterday. It's gotta be love. It couldn't be indigestion. Beyond any question, I'm fluttery as a dog. I've heard people say it's no worse than a cold, but oh, that fever. I'm born to a crisp, but nevertheless, it's only love. You know, that's a terrible way for a professor to feel about one of his students, Miss Frayne. I think it's wonderful. But I wish you wouldn't call me Miss Frayne. All right, Frankie. <laughs> Professor Dolan, may I call you Junior? <laughs> Say, why don't we meet for dinner just to try on first names for size, huh? Fine. Oh, oh, oh. We better make an after dinner in the park. I, uh, I have to see somebody backstage at the ballet. <laughs> I have come to see you, Miss Barnaba, because I feel that only you are a great enough dancer to perform this ballet. Ah, oh, you dear boy. Well, it's called Slaughter on 10th Avenue, and it was composed by one of my students. You are a music professor? Yes, ma'am. Oh, dear boy, if I had known that professors are so handsome, I would have gone to school. Now, come, sit closer. Well, this ballet is new and different and exciting. The, the Imperial Ballet Company could do it wonderfully. Oh, uh, yes, yes. We will talk about that later. A prima ballerina in each love. Uh, Miss Bonneville. You may call me Vera. Now hold my hand. Uh, Miss Bonneville, the, the ballet. Oh! Five seconds, I leave you alone, Vera. And I find you holding the hand. Of another man. Uh, uh, Professor Dolan, uh, this is Constantine Morrissey of my supporting cast. Ah! He makes noise like a sheep. I resign. All right, go ahead, resign. But do not be late for rehearsal. <laughs> a very jealous man. Golly, I, I read that you and Morrissey are engaged. We are engaged, we are not engaged. We love each other. We hate each other. 
Temperament, temperament. Uh, Miss Barnaba, I'll leave the ballet for you to consider. And be sure to look at this passage, this love theme. Mm -hmm. well, right there, he takes the girl in his arms like this and he dances. Can't you hear it? Can't you feel it in your feet? Oh, Miss Barnaba, if I don't dance, I'll die. Could you get me a job with the ballet just... Part-time, maybe as a super or something? If you are nice to me. Oh. Well, if you don't mind, I'll be nice to you later. I almost forgot I have a date in the park. And that's why I'm late, Frankie. I'm sorry I sort of got all involved. Why would you want to be just a super in the Imperial Ballet? Well, maybe I'll be leading a double life, being a professor and a dancer, too. But I've just got to. Are you going to be seeing that Vera Barnova again? Oh, no, honey, you shouldn't be jealous. I'll, I'll be seeing her, but I'll be thinking of you. Is that trick done with mirrors? You know, I know a spot you and I are going to someday, Frankie. It's a family landmark, a tiny hotel like dancing, it's in my blood. Is it a spot for honeymooners? Oh, it's perfect. Oh, it'd be wonderful. There's a small hotel with a wishing well. I wish that we were there. I don't see you as often as I'd like. You'll understand, won't you? Oh, everything's going to work out okay, Frankie. Cross your fingers. in just a moment. Now here is Act Two of Rogers and Hearts and George Abbott's On Your Toes, starring Gordon McRae as Professor Dolan and Marion Bell as Frankie. Well, oh, Frankie, thanks for waiting so late. Oh, it's all right, Professor. Hey, look, stars are all out. Oh, don't ask me to look at the stars, Junior. They... They get me all misty-eyed. How are things at the ballet? Oh, wonderful news. They're not only doing Slaughter on 10th Avenue, but I'm the special director for the Modern Steps. Oh, that's great, Junior, but I'll bet it means a lot of rehearsing. Mm-hmm. Day and night. Oh. If you're looking for a misty-eyed gal who used to like to meet her fellow on a starry night, she went that way. Oh, Frankie, come here. We'll have lots of nights, just like this one. And all around the 
and balmy weather. Oh, at night no other song but hearts that beat together. You can almost hear the things I'm thinking. You can almost see my heart to meet Vera Barnabas uh, to go over tomorrow's choreography. Oh. It's very important. <laughs> You're happy about this, aren't you, Frankie? It's a wonderful break for the ballet and for me. Sure, sure, Junior. I, I'm happy. Oh, good. Well, I'll, I'll see you in a few days. Bye, Frankie. Bye. Sure. I'll be happy. Absolutely hysterical with laughter. Look at yourself. If you had a sense of humor, you would laugh to beat the band. Look at yourself. Do you still believe the rumor that romance is simply crime? Since you took it right on the chin, you have lost that right to face grin. My mental state is all a jumble. I sit around and sadly mumble Who's rushing so here I am Very glad to be unhappy I can't win, but here I am More than glad to be unhappy Unrequited love's a bow And I've got it pretty bad But for someone you adore It's a pleasure to be sad Like a straying baby lamb With no mammy and no pappy I'm so unhappy Mr. Morrison, this is an American rhythm. And who are you, Mr. Amateur, to tell the great Morrison how to dance? You don't seem to get the rhythm. I'm afraid, Mr. Morrison, that when it comes to syncopation, you have a tin ear. I have the most beautiful ears in the world. But you can't dance. How dare you to say that to the greatest dancer of the century? 
I will have you torn apart like the wolves were chewing you. Oh, Junior, I have decided. You will be my partner. We will rehearse together for hours and hours. For hours and hours, huh? Doesn't that make you happy? Oh, I do not understand Americans. They are always happy and sad at the same time. Yeah, happy. Happy and sad. Who's rushing? So here I am. Very glad to be unhappy. I can't win, but here I am. More than glad to be unhappy. Unrequited love's a bore. And I've got it pretty bad. But for someone you adore, it's a pleasure to be sad. Like a straying baby lamb with no mammy and no pappy. I'm so unhappy, but oh, so glad. Ladies gentlemen of the radio audience, we are speaking to you from our special broadcasting box at the Cosmopolitan Opera House, where we are about to hear the premiere performance of Slaughter on 10th Avenue. The leading roles will be danced by Vera Barnova and an unknown young male dancer whose name has not yet been announced. There's been no explanation why the great moral scene is not dancing tonight. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Moral scene speaking. Yes, listen. At the end of the ballet, this American nobody is dancing around and round the body. When he stops dancing and collapses, that is when you shoot him. There will be big applause and no will no know who did it. Good. And now the conductor raises his baton, the lights dim, the curtain is going up, and we are to hear... Slaughter on 10th Avenue. Something terrible's happened. One of the stagehands overheard Morrisine phoning some gangsters to knock off Junior. Oh, no! Look, Frankie. Peek through the curtain. Those two thugs in the right stage box? Look at those bulges under their coats. They're going to get him. Just as he collapses. In the finale. We've got to warn him. I'll slip on stage with a note. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the finale of the ballet as this brilliant young dancer frantically whirls round and round the body on the stage. Keep going, maestro. Keep on playing. Okay, Mr. Dolan, we nabbed him. We got him. Hit the finale. I can collapse now.
Junior. Yes, Frankie. And oh, darling, never leave me again. I've got the dancing hall all of my system. Now all I want to do is go to a certain spot and have a honeymoon with my gal. No ballet, no audiences. Nobody else but us. Looking through the window, you can see a distant steeple. Gentlemen, lovely Marion Bell will be back for a curtain call in just a moment. And meanwhile, our thanks to Fritz Feld, Isabel Jewell, Lee Keel, Peter Leeds, Sidney Miller, Elvina Temple, and to our entire company. On Your Toes with book by R- Rogers and Hart and George Abbott, and music and lyrics by Richard Rogers and Lorenz Hart, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. The other day I heard it said that travel by air is now safer than travel by railroad. Is that correct? No, indeed. It is true that in the 12 months ending in September, the domestic scheduled airlines had their best safety record. But in the same 12 months, the railroad safety record was three times as good. Well, that's just for a particular 12 months. What about the record over the years? Official reports to the Interstate Commerce Commission and the Civil Aeronautics Board show that in every year for which comparative figures are available, rail travel has been from two to 20 times safer than travel by domestic scheduled airlines. Thank you, Marvin. Now, here again is our charming guest, Marion Bell. Thank you, Gordon. Uh, uh, can I get off my toes now? Well, the ballet's over, Marion, and you were wonderful. Oh, who's tripping the light fantastic with you next week, Gordon? Well, Mimi Benzel will be our guest, Marion, and we're going to sing the rousing and unforgettable Vagabond King. We'll all be listening. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Marion, and come back real soon. All aboard! Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so until next Monday night, and the Vagabond King. This is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Gordon McRae appeared through the courtesy of Warner Brothers, producers of The Miracle of Fatima. Our choir was under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music was prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Until next week, this is Marvin Miller saying goodnight for the American Railroads. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Tonight, the voice of Firestone features Lawrence Melchior on NBC.